It must be awfully sad for a person to, leave, to have to leave their family and their country to go and work somewhere else and to not really know where they're going and they know, you know how long they're going to be away. But, but what they do know is they won't be belonging there. They won't, have, they won't be able to bring their family with them. At least when my family came to this country, um, we came as a family. And, and there was a goal to, you know, everybody had a goal here. Um, everybody had an aspiration and a dream. And I think that's the, that's the biggest difference between having a migrant workforce and a, and a, a, land, you know, a landed Im immigrant population. The migrant workforce is really beholden on their employer for everything. And I think no human being should be beholden upon another. Harvest Pilgrims is, uh, uh, is a collection of photographs and interviews that I've been working on for about 20 years or more than 20 years, um, documenting farm workers, migrant farm workers who come to work in, in Canada from Mexico, Jamaica, and seven other countries of the Eastern Caribbean. Um, and they come on a temporary basis. They come as guest workers. They come to work for anywhere from between two months and eight months. In all in all facets of Ontario and Canadian agriculture, from the original the early days it was tobacco and and then it went it spread out, it spread to um, you know fruit and vegetables and and now it's going you know there's also people coming in to work in ornamental farms and really all all, all manner of, of agriculture. Most people in cities truly don't have a, a clue about about farm work and about where where our food comes from. As a matter of fact, in doing these photographs over the years. Um, and going to so many farms, uh, I've had a number of uh, exhibitions. And I remember that uh, at one exhibition in particular, as I was hanging my photographs, I was asked in which country were these pictures taken. And the people asking me, you know, when I replied they were taken in Ontario, they were quite incredulous because they really didn't, had not a, no idea, they didn't expect that, that we had this kind of, of um, a foreign farm worker force present uh, in Ontario. And yet, and yet the, um, the idea of farm workers coming to Ontario, to Canada, it started in Ontario, but now it's across the country, but the majority is in Ontario still. But the idea of foreign farm workers uh, from different countries coming into Canada on a temporary basis um, has now become kind of entrenched in our way, economic way of life, in our economic system. I think you can't just talk about the workers without talking about their families and, and, and where they come from. And so I've tried to photograph the conditions that they live in, um, you know, back, back in their own homes. And I did a lot of family portraits, and then I realized the family portraits were oftentimes the, the father in the, or the family or the husband was missing because that father and the husband, you know, was, was up working up here in Canada. In some cases, he might have been working in, in the United States, but. Uh, I was concentrating on the families who had relatives in, in Canada. So I, did, I made these portraits without the, the man in the, in, in the family, just the, the women and the children. I asked the women how they felt about the man leaving, and the women said that when the men go up north, we, the women, have to become both, have to be both husbands and wives at the same time. It's hard to really choose one image, you know. Um, and, but I remember when I was in Mexico in a small village called Monte Prieto, and I arrived there, I knew the workers were going to be returning on a certain day. They took me to the village with them, and the first thing that happened in the village is, um, oh, people start saying, Manuel, Manuel just came back. He's returned again, because the idea of again, you know. Um, and then Manuel meets his sister in the middle of the road. And as soon as he sees his, his older sister, uh, he breaks down in, in, in tears and cries. He hadn't seen her in eight months. 
So the idea, you know, this kind of permanent, permanently being in, being being a transient on a permanent basis, is I think the the strangest thing for me to, to to accept. You can be a transient for you know for a certain period of time, if, you know, but it's this is a permanent situation. Even though ironically the program is called temporary temporary workers, because it really refers to the fact that they are only temporarily needed every year. These migrant workers are are um, completely dependent on their employer, on the farmer that they that they work for, uh, in that they they live right on the farm. They usually live, you know, only a few meters away from the actual work to be that that they have to perform. Um, they really can't. They they really are are not. They don't have a tourism visa. They they're not really free to travel. Um, they basically are stuck on the farm. You often hear that if you complain and you don't like the working conditions, the, the answer is, well, if you don't like it, you know, it's your choice. You don't need to come here. Uh, you can go back home. But they know that if they go back home, they'll never be able to come back again. People try and justify the, the, the existence of a, of a program like this with reasons of, uh, we don't have to worry because where they come from, they're so poor anyways. Uh, that's, you know, two wrongs don't make a right, you know, and I think that's a very poor rationalization. I think that if we're interested in in, in human dignity, then we, we strive to have justice in, in the workplace, no matter who is working in that workplace. One of the first steps in changing is, is, um, is making, creating, creating a condition whereby the worker is not beholden to his employer. And that means the worker is beholden to himself and to the association that he wants to organize into. I, th I think that's really the, the evolution that we have to go towards. The rights of farm workers to organize into a union, um, sh why, is, why is that so different than the rights of an industrial worker to organize into a union? And, and the time has come for that, and I think there are efforts being made um, across the country to, or to organize them, and there's a real resistance to that, it seems, uh, at least in Ontario, uh, even though um, when you look at it constitutionally, um, you know, you want, how can you argue against this? And and why and why would things you know and why would people be afraid of, of uh, having organized farm workers picking their tomatoes? When we drive around farm country, we, we sometimes see people working in fields, uh, people who may, maybe don't look like us, um, and um, but we 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 really, we really they're very anonymous. We see them you know as we drive by, um, and we don't don't really know much about them. We don't really we don't really think very much about them. But I think we should be thinking. Who are these people? Why are they here? What are they doing? What are their working conditions like? Um, and, and where would, you know, this apple that I'm eating today in my lunch bag or in my car as I'm driving along, you know, how did it get to me? <laughs>